And it's time right now for a weekly political roundtable with Democratic strategist Brendan Gill and Republican strategist Roger Bodman. Gentlemen, welcome you back to the program. Uh, so Sorry. I guess we should start somewhere with the Newark mayor's race. First of all, it's, it's the closest race we have going. Uh, and it certainly seems to be vigorous, shall we say. Anything unusual in this race? Uh, the polls, but uh, at least the Baraka polls, but Baraka well ahead. Well, listen, I, I don't think a, a vigorous uh, race for the mayorship in Newark is uh, to be expected. Uh, if anything, actually, I would say um, it's a little bit uh, quieter um, than usual. I think there's, um, you know, a perception that, uh, or not a perception, you know, a lot of information out there that says this is Roz Baraka's race, uh, you know, to lose. Um, Shavar Jeffries, uh, who's a very attractive a candidate, seems to have had a lot of trouble just getting any traction uh, throughout this race. Uh, the situation, uh, you know, now with the uh, the burning bus and, and a potential campaign worker being a part of that mm -hmm. hasn't helped him. So um, I would say that, um, you know, as we go into the last uh, six weeks here, you know, definitely uh, Councilmember Baraka is in a very, very strong position and uh, to win this race. How important is it for Newark to have a, a mayor, a strong and effective mayor, in order to get its, its needs addressed in this state? Well, clearly it's important, but I, I defer to my freeholder friend here. You know, I mean, this really isn't my political party, uh, even though it's a nonpartisan election. So I agree with everything the man said. I think it's brilliant analysis. Thank I was hoping you were going to get a little more than that. <laughs> well, let's, but, of course, you have to have a strong mayor, whoever that may be. Well, let's go over to your party for a second there, because looking at our governor, you're the head of your yeah, party. Yeah, that would be state. my party, right. Uh, the uh, governor's poll numbers have uh, not exactly... Uh, been moving upward, shall we say? Uh, we saw one. I the, think that's a bit of an understatement. Well, we, yes. I, I, I said the race in Newark was vigorous. <laughs> I said the, I'm trying to be understated today. Thank you. Uh, are you worried at all? No, not at all. To the contrary, I, you know, listen. I have never seen, you know, regardless of your opinion of of what all the circumstances about, there mm -hmm. has been a barrage of media. I, this year is my 40th year in politics since I graduated from college, so I've been around this game a long time. I have never seen a barrage of media on an issue uh, aimed at one individual as as has taken place over this Bridgegate situation. So you got to put this in some kind of perspective. Having a 51% favorability in New Jersey after all of that stuff is really rather remarkable. There's, I'm sure there are dozens of governors who would, rather, would love to have a 51% favorability rating in their state without any but of this stuff. Looking, I mean, he was looking kind of beyond New Jersey for well, these well, polls well, now, and, uh, yeah. listen, I'm not suggesting for a minute it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's good. What I'm suggesting is that it's arrested, it appears. It appears mm -hmm. that it's hit bottom. Maybe not. Well, we don't, yeah, we don't know that. I mean, I, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, Roger, but I disagree. I disagree. Uh, but I'm shocked. Uh, you know, I think there. I think there's some troubling uh, numbers in that in that poll. Uh, first of all, he's still 15 points down from where he was uh, before Bridgegate. Uh, I think the other thing in that poll, which is very significant, is that less than a third of the people uh, polled believe uh, his self-produced report, claiming that he had no knowledge of the incident. Um, and. In, within that group, only half had heard about the report up until this point. So what it shows to me is that the more people hear about their, this report, the more people hear about this issue, it continues to drive the governor's numbers down, not only in New Jersey, Mike, to your point, but also nationally, because there was another interesting poll uh, which showed the governor now in seventh place uh, in the Iowa, uh, the early mm -hmm. numbers for the Iowa caucus. So again, this is not, not my side of the right. aisle, but I, I can't see how any of those numbers are taken into totality are good for the governor. Well, having covered more than a few Iowa caucuses, we never ended up with President Gephardt or President right. Matt Robertson. Mm -hmm. So That's sometimes you too. can win there and not necessarily go much farther true, than that. True, uh, true. How come we don't really have a Senate race? Whatever, whatever <laughs> happened to that? I mean, Mr. Booker has to run for Re-election? Well, re you know, I'm going to say something that's probably going to annoy my uh, my party uh, immensely, but, you know, I basically hate Senate races as a Republican in New Jersey. You and hate the Senate races? Yes, and the reason well, is we don't, win, <laughs> we don't win any of them. Okay, I'm a pragmatist in this party. I mean, step on that line. I thought you were going actually, there. Yeah. I mean, I think they're lovely races to have, but it would be really nice if we'd win one. We Why haven't won one Why? since 1972. Look at the state. I mean, look at New Jersey. It is a blue, blue, blue state. I mean, 750,000 more registered Democrats. Keep that in mind when you look at the, that poll we just discussed, by the way, 51% with that kind of blue state. But uh, the point being, it is a very blue state and very difficult to win a federal race in New Jersey. Governor races are in a different year for a whole bunch of very good reasons. You must be just thrilled, ecstatic. I'm only sure. got about 20 seconds <laughs> you to, ought to, be. to, to yeah, well, enjoy this. I mean, I would also say that the strength of our candidates as well, not only is it a blue state, but uh, I think you also see in Senator Booker a strong candidate. We saw that with the filing on Monday, 16,000 signatures sta you know, statewide, a, a record for any statewide candidate, a person who has financial advantages, name identification, and a record, a strong record to run on is probably also contributing to the fact that, uh, you know, no one wants to take that challenge on. 
Well, the challenge right now is for us to say goodbye gracefully, and we'll do that. We'll goodbye, gracefully. Goodbye. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Take care, Mike.